Okay, so this is a program called Sketchbook Pro, and if you want to start drawing digitally, uh, this is the program I would recommend. Um, unlike Photoshop's my favorite for rendering, this is my favorite for drawing digitally. Uh, and I'll show you a few just to give you a quick overview. It's a it's a simpler program I think than Photoshop, but it, it's quite powerful. It has some really interesting features and tools, which I want to give you a little quick overview of. Um, just like with any digital program, I think it's a good idea to go find an in-depth tutorial if you're new to digital uh, drawing and rendering. Uh, but I just give you a, a just a quick overview. I just wanted to list it in the book, uh, make you aware of it, and that's kind of what this video is for, just to show you just a couple of uh, quick things that it can do that are pretty interesting. Um, you have a a layer management menu to the right. I just added a new layer by hitting that little plus button. You have a set of drawing tools and erasing tools over on the left. Um, and these, of course, you can move them around to wherever you like. And then uh, you have some other tools across the top. There's also a, this uh, lagoon here in the corner where you can do some quick selections for colors, um, different tools. I'll just use a brush, or sorry, a pencil tool for now. And um, let me show you one of, so there's a symmetry tool, which is pretty cool. You can do, uh, symmetry left and right. You can also flip that to horizontal. And you're like the Von Dutch uh, pinstriping master without even having to work. And then there's the uh, four angle. Let's just kill that layer. Let's add a new one. And then you've got the uh, this guy, which is a four quadrant and it does symmetry in all four. So for doing elaborate patterns and things, this is this is pretty incredible um, to have it, you know, fluidly doing this and something you cannot do in a program like Photoshop. So um, pretty great for all that. And you can use those sort of patterns for all sorts of graphics and other applications later. Uh, you can save out regular file formats, Photoshop, etc., JPEGs, whatever you like. Okay, let's clear those. Um, I've been uh, working with uh, Autodesk a little bit to help to develop some um, perspective tools. So let's actually, oops, sorry, I still have on my mirroring. Let's go here to perspective tool. Uh, let's go to one point. There's my vanishing point. I can move it wherever I like, and then it auto snaps. So um, anytime I sketch a line generally in the direction of that vanishing point, it's going to snap to that VP. And then when I draw close to horizontal, it will snap to horizontal. Same for vertical and horizontal again. And then let's see, back another vertical, back to my VP, go up, over, and you can start building grids, which is pretty great just on the fly if you've done a lot of perspective drawing you uh, hopefully you immediately see the value of this and just start making boxes and playing in perspective so that's that's pretty cool um, a few of the things different ones we have a, a one point grid a two point grid let me zoom back here so I can see all my points. Actually, it's probably just under there. So let's uh, just compress. Let's see. Let's do it. Uh, sorry, we'll just pull back. Okay. Something like that. So this this is pretty interactive tool. You can zoom, and then you hold out on the ring, and then you can move all with one tool. So that's also pretty pretty sophisticated. And let's drop that and go back to perspective. There's my two points. So you can move these points and tilt your horizon um, to set up your perspective grid. And then just like the one point, it snaps automatically. So Sketchbook Pro is something I use much more like a sketching tool. I try not to get too caught up in um, making it do a lot of things like Photoshop, for instance. I'm not don't go layer crazy. You can do all the layers. You have a lot of the same compositing. Um, in fact, it looks like they're all the same. Color dodge and, and multiply, etc. 
but primarily I think of it and use it as a sketching tool. And again, what's great about that is the old Command Z. When you make mistakes, quick and easy to undo. But this whole interactive and smart snapping grid is uh, a new feature for this this summer. It just came out, and uh, I think it's it's pretty pretty awesome. Really, I really like it to lay out a quick grid, and then make a new layer on top. For instance, so let's say I just made a, a grid here that I was going to use. And a grid for me is just a bunch of, of guidelines describing a three-dimensional space using right my vanishing points and my horizon line. So then what I could do is put a new layer on top of that, turn off my perspective grid, and then uh, take this one and turn down the opacity, for instance. And you can just grab here and slide that little slider down. And then I could start drawing here on another layer just freehand drawing and let's uh, see I just draw a center line of some shape like so then I'll locate a couple positions for some sections and then when I draw across I just use my guidelines that are in my grid there's another guideline there so I could draw here let's just draw one little half of that shape and maybe that's the other section through there so you can see using my cross section, or sorry, using my guidelines makes it easier for me to start to draw sections. And I usually when I'm doing quick sketch, a quick sketch, I don't worry about all it being loose and, and wiggly, etc. cetera. Um, I'll just come back and fix that up using sweeps um, and those sorts of things after. And I'll do it with an overlay. So the fact you have layers is really cool because you can just rough sketch, find your design, then just throw another layer on top, make this layer more transparent, and just keep refining and working it up, working it up. So it's like infinite layers of tracing paper, which is super beneficial to designers because working drawings for us are just that, working drawings that keep evolving and evolving. Uh, let's kill that one. Let's go back to the perspective two tool. I'll show you the, a couple others. It's a three-point perspective. Um, great for doing extreme perspectives and also if you happen to be looking down on an object. So just give you a quick example of that grid. So there's that grid. It's pretty extreme perspective, well outside the cone of vision, but you get the idea. Um, if you want it to be um, a little bit more controlled, you would just zoom back like this go back to your grid and pull your vanishing point way down below and you'll get a new grid and let's zoom back in let's get rid of that let's add a new layer let's go back to here okay so see my VP is way below now and now when I'm sketching it'll still snap it's just going out of frame which is fine All right and you can come back in and beef up your line weights. It's got, you know, adjustable brush, uh, brush, brush size, all the same things you would expect from a good digital drawing program. Um, okay, another grid that it has, and I love this one. Oops, let's pull back so it's not so extreme. Set my grid first. Okay, this is a curvilinear grid. And there's my vanishing point. So I have above and below the horizon and then out left and right and then dead center. So it's actually like five, five VPs. And let's come here. Let's zoom back in. Move it around a bit. Reactivate. Pencil. New layer. And you get true curvilinear perspective, which is much more like what the human eye sees or a fisheye lens in this case, where we get some lens distortion to our verticals. And the further away we get from the center of our image, the more they bend like the shape of the lens. So this would be just like a fisheye lens. And we've got a single VP. And if you leave the single vanishing point in the center of your image, then these, of course, do not bend because uh, they're going back to the center of your, your lens, basically. So that's a curvilinear perspective grid. 
All right, hide that one. Um, it's also got some really cool features to improve your line quality. So when you sketch, this is kind of like a lazy, I guess call it like lazy mouse in a way. And it, if you can turn up the, how lazy, see that blue line? It sort of smooths out your stroke by the time it catches up to your cursor. It's a little hard to control with this 200 setting, but that's why the default is down here around 40 or something. Um, so really line smoothing ability, um, which is also very helpful when you're trying to do that nice last layer to give you a nice, nice line quality back over the top of your line drawing. Okay, of course it's got all the all the painting, um, all the painting tools as well. Um, I'm still of the probably on the painting side. I still am sort of the Photoshop for value application, um, but this is far superior for drawing, and uh, it's my favorite for drawing. And of course, there's a lot of other tools, um, but I just wanted to give you a quick intro, quick uh, view of what's my favorite. Um, drawing, digital drawing program, and I think it's a great entry into working digitally uh, with sketching, with value and line, because it's very intuitive, uh, it's very similar to traditional media, but it's got some really helpful tools that will allow you to create some more accuracy um, with your perspective grids, which is very helpful. And uh, so check it out, it's very inexpensive. Um, I think we're going to try and actually put some sort of a, a trial basis free code for you guys to do um, and we'll figure that out uh, coming soon so uh, enjoy it give it a try